Hello and welcome back to my video channel. Today I'm going to be talking about this curious device here, which kind of looks like a large coin cell battery. It's actually called an iButton, and internally it contains an integrated circuit with a digital serial number contained inside of it. And it's designed to connect to a socket like this, which is an inner contact and an outer contact. The outer contact is ground, and the inner contact supplies both power and data transmission to and from the device. So when you when, when you connect it, it's actually a self it's actually a self-powered device. So I'm going to pop up my little screen here. And when I, oh, by the way, I have a little reader device over here using an Arduino Nano that's connected up to this. It's just the two wires coming from this, this socket here. Ignore this for now. I'll talk about that in a minute. This is running a simple Arduino sketch that's going to actually query this device. And up on the inset screen you should be seeing, you'll see it print out the serial number of the device. And, it queries it about once a second. If I pull the device out, it'll stop querying it. I put it back in, it'll start querying it again. So let's talk a little bit about how the one-wire bus works. Essentially, it's going to be a line that's going to be um, pulled high by a 2.2, approximately K resistor like that. And then the device itself is going to connect to there and then to ground. And then this goes into the reader circuit like that. This is um, plus plus five volts. Um, this, so this line is normally going to be floating at, at high. So to start the retransaction, the reader circuit over here is going to create a reset pulse that's going to pull low for about, I think it's 480 microseconds. And if there's a device connected, it's going to wait about 50 microseconds. It's going to pull the line low again and for about, I think, 150 microseconds and 480, pardon my writing like this. And that indicates back to the reader circuit that there is a device present on the bus. Uh, at this point, it's going to try to send a command out to it. And it does that initially by sending a one of two kinds of pulses, either a short pulse for some period of time or a longer pulse from some period of time. The short pulse is a one and the longer pulse is a zero. It does the same thing if it wants to read back, except it sends a very short pulse, and then it assumes that the, the, it's going to take this pulse high again, but the, if the device, if the slave device is connected, it wants to send something back, it continues to hold the line low for a slightly longer time. That's going to send a one back to the reader circuit, or if it holds the pulse low for an even longer period of time, that's a way of sending back a zero. That's essentially the communication technique it uses to talk back and forth. So let's run that same demo again. This time I've got a little board here which contains an ATtiny10 microprocessor, which I've coded up with my ATtiny10 IDE software, links below. And it contains software that's going to exactly mimic this device right here. Notice I have nothing connected into the device here. I'm going to, I'm going to power up my... Um, screen again, start recording. And when I plug this into the right set of contacts here, make it sure I get this right, it's going to start printing out the very same serial number as I was able to read off this device and transfer into code onto this device. It includes all the same circuitry here, a Schottky diode and a capacitor, which is needed to supply a continuous power to the ATtiny10, so it's more or less a complete mimic of this device right here. So let's go back to the timing diagram again. Here's a screen capture from a Soleil logic analyzer that shows the complete read sequence in action. On the left, you can see the reset pulse followed by the present pulse, then a delay. Then you can't see the decoded value, but there's a byte set that's actually a command byte that initiates what's called the search command. And that's gonna cause the slave device to read back a 64-bit value that consists of initially a family code, which is a byte, and then eight, six bytes that are the serial number, and then finally a CRC value for a total of eight bytes. Now the command byte, which is eight bits, is written in this fashion here, but we just continue it out so we have like eight bits in total, and that would be a, a, a one, a one, 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 zero, 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 zero for an F0 command, which is the search command. That's actually called the one wire search command. Now search command is different than just normal write sequence. 
what happens is it's going to send a, a group of three pulses. The first two are going to be read pulses, and the last one is going to be a write pulse. Uh, for all of the 64 bits that the, that the um, one-wire device wants to send back, starting with the least significant bit, it responds with that value of that bit in the first read pulse, one was short or zero was long, followed by the complement. So if this is a one, then the complement's going to be zero. And then finally, the, the reader device is going to send back the bit that it read in this position here, and which is going to be, in this case, a 1. Now, what this does is it's a way of figuring out how many devices are connected to the bus. Uh, the, the, it is a bus, after all. It's not just a single device that, be, that can be connected to the little reader device here. But the devices don't want to collide with each other, so as it sends these read bits out, Eventually, it's going to get a it's going to get a write back. It's going to see a write from the reader that doesn't match what it it sent back to the to the reader in the first place. In which case, it it, it drops out of the protocol and assumes it's it's collided with some other device, and it stays quiet until the next reset pulse comes along. In this way, the 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 um, the reader can try again and again and again until it figures out how many devices th there are. And once it's received all eight bytes, uh, the six bytes that constitute the serial number are actually also the bus address on the bus. So from that point on, only that device will be responding, but it lets it send additional commands, which the digital serial device actually doesn't use, but the other devices in the series, such as the ones that store data, can send additional commands out that would read bytes or write bytes back and forth from the device. And if you'd like to learn more about this project, you should uh, check out my page over at Wayne's Tinkering page. And there's an article there that goes into a great deal of detail about this project, describes the one wire protocol in more detail, it has links to more information about the one wire technology over at Maxim, in different packages that you can get these kind of devices in. And uh, if you scroll to the bottom of the page, you'll find there's all the links to the source code that you'll need. But if you want to build one, I recommend that you go over to OSH Park. There's a link right here. And for 90 cents, you can, you can purchase three copies of this board that I designed that is basically a carrier for an AT2010. So it fits onto a breadboard with the 10th inch spacing. The LED and the, and the resistor here are optional. That's for another project that uses the AT2010. Uh, but to make this all work, you could download a, a sketch down here called serial number prg.ino. That's actually will load up in the Arduino IDE. Looks like this, and it's basically a programmer sketch that can program the 1810, and it has built into it the code for this particular this particular project. So if I start this code up, it'll print out a prompt like this, and it'll explain to me how to uh, connect. Um, the 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 Arduino to the AT2010, but if you simply plug that little board I just showed you into pins two through six, uh, actually two through seven, because there's an optional pin on that board, and uh, then just press the type in P and press send, it'll go ahead and program the board for you, and then you're all done. Then you can actually unplug it from the Arduino, and you now have a fully programmed AT2010 uh, running my code. Or if you scroll back up the page a bit, you'll come across a project I've been working on the last couple of years. It's called AT2010 IDE. If you click this link here, it'll take you to my GitHub page that describes this project in more detail. It's my own version of an IDE, sort of like Arduino, but simplified and scaled down and streamlined for working with the AT2010 processors. It's written in Java and it's designed to run on Mac OS, Windows, and Linux, although it's mostly developed under Mac OS. If you start up the program, it looks like this, and it has built-in documentation that will tell you more about the, the different processors that it works with, the AT2010, the 84, the 85. It has built-in information on the ports and so forth. Um, but if you click over here, you can actually load in the source code. This happens to be the code for the, the serial number project that we're working on. And if I click Actions Build, it's going to compile that and give me a mixed assembly language and C code listing, which you can scroll through. Or you can take a look at the hex output. This is the actual code that was in that Arduino sketch. 
that I showed you earlier that, that's the programmer. But the trick, the nice trick here is you can, under actions, you can select programmer and you can generate the Arduino programmer sketch. And then you've just generated the same Arduino sketch that I used a few minutes ago just to, to program the 1890 So that's it for this video. If you liked it, please give it a big thumbs up. And if you'd like to be notified when I have new videos come out, just click the little bell icon thingy and uh, you'll be notified. I hope you enjoyed it.